Okay, so let's get started. Remember, the purpose, the objective of this experiment is to be able to estimate the density of live bacteria in this, in this bacterial culture. Um, we don't know what the density is, and that might be part of a bigger experiment that we are doing. And one part of that experiment might be to measure the effect of different factors on bacterial growth. And so, once we have um, cultured the bacteria uh, in different conditions, perhaps different temperatures, perhaps different pHs, perhaps different nutrients, perhaps different um, levels of oxygen, once we have placed a, a certain number of bacteria in those different conditions for a certain amount of time, allowing them some time to grow in those different conditions, we might then be at a point where we want to measure or well, what was the effect of that factor on the growth of the bacteria and at that point we will want to measure how much bacteria how dense is our culture of bacteria the more dense the culture of bacteria the more bacteria the more bacterial growth has occurred the lower the density of the bacteria the more negative impact that factor or, or that condition had on the growth of the bacteria so let's say for one of the conditions we have our bacterial culture, the bacteria have been growing for some time, and we want to now measure the density of this bacterial culture. How we, are we going to do it? So what we are going to do is first um, pour some, or the, or the whole point of this is going to be that we are going to make a serial dilution of this bacterial culture in these tubes. Once we have made a serial dilution, each of these, the diluted culture in each of these tubes will then be used to inoculate an agar plate. Okay, now the idea is that each single living bacterial cell in the original culture will form a colony on the agar after a few days. So, so over, the, over those hours, over the day, or two days, 24 to 48 hours, each single cell will have multiplied. One cell becomes two cells, becomes four cells, becomes eight cells, becomes uh, 16 cells, 32 cells, and so on, until they are many millions of cells which have now formed a colony that is visible to us after a couple of days and the idea is that by counting the colonies in the agar plate and then multiplying by the dilution factor of that uh, dilution we will then be able to estimate the concent or the density of the cells in the original culture but because we don't know um, how dense this is, it may be that the first dilution is too dense for us to count the colonies. It might be that we have to dilute it a few times before we get a, the separation of individual cells to the level that we can count individual colonies. Now, because we don't know which in, the, the dilution that is necessary in order to get to that point, we have to do a serial dilution. Okay, so the first thing I will do is pour the agar plates, okay? And this has to be done using aseptic technique again. So I have nutrient agar. I've got nutrient agar, and it is molten nutrient agar at this point. Okay, and then using aseptic technique, I will pour an agar plate, and then I will repeat that process for the other plates. Okay, so one of the things that I must try and do is to keep these containers uh, open only as much as is necessary and as long as, as is necessary. So I pour a little bit out here. Okay, it doesn't have to cover the whole surface. What I'm going to do is just small circles and use that small circles to ensure that the agar has covered the whole surface and I will repeat the other plates. Okay, once I've done that, I'm just going to leave the plate open slightly 
so that too much condensation doesn't form on the inside of the lid. Okay, so I'll pour the other plates. While we do the next part, these agar plates, the molten agar, as it cools, it will become solid and it will form the surface on which the bacterial cells can grow. The agar has um, nutrients in it that should support the growth of the bacteria. Okay, so now we will do the cereal dilutions. So we're going to make our cereal dilutions now and for this I will take a sterile syringe and the volumes here aren't, um, it doesn't matter what volume you use as long as you're consistent in your method. Okay, so generally we, we like to do 1 in 10 dilutions. So each time we're going to do 1 in 10 dilutions. So I've got 5 uh, centimeter cubed syringe here, I will transfer 4.5 centimeters cubed into each of these test tubes. 4.5 each time. Okay, so I now have 4.5 centimeters cubed of nutrient broth in these test tubes and now I will begin my cereal dilution so flame the neck of the bacterial culture vial and transfer 500 microliters from the bacterial culture into tube A into tube A and flame the neck of the tube again and we are done with the bacterial culture okay okay so i've added my bacterial culture in here 500 microliters of that and now i'm just going to invert that a few times to mix it and once i've done that i have my 1 in 10 um, dilution and from here I will again transfer 500 microliters to the next tube and repeat the process. So I'll leave that in here. Again add the culture, invert the tube to mix it properly and then transfer 500 microliters to the next tube. there we have our cereal dilution. This should be our 1 in 10 dilution of the original culture. We'll just put it there for reference. This should be the 10 times more dilute than that. So that should be 1 in 100, 1 in 1,000, 1 in 10,000, 1 in 100,000. Okay. Now the next thing is to do is to take a small volume, a small but known volume of each culture plate onto and inoculate the agar plates. So that's what we'll do next. We've got our agar and at this point the agar should have solidified. Usually you want to give it at least five minutes to uh, in order for that to happen. You do not want to disturb the plate while it's in the middle of setting um, or solidifying because um, that, that can make the surface uneven and affect the interpretation of your results that's the most important thing that you want to avoid but you can see hopefully that the um, if you look from the side the, the it does appear cloudy so that's kind of giving you the clue that it has set at this point 
okay? So I'm just going to place my plates here and I'm conscious that I've moved quite far away from my flame. Okay, but that's that's just so that you have a good view of what's going on. Okay, right. So we have our plates here. Good practice would be to label the sides of your plates. So you would have labeled your tube here uh, with the dilution to be super safe. Or you can just make sure that you label them something identifiable A, B, C, D, E, and correspondingly each of your plates A, B, C, D, E, and so on, and so that you remember um, which dilution is going into which plate, and so it makes the interpretation of your results a couple of days or one day later uh, possible without any confusion. Okay, so um, what I will do is just to kind of uh, remind you of is that it is not a good idea to label the top or the bottom of your plate because that is where you will be observing your results. You want to be um, only labeling the sides of your plate. So what we are going to do is continuing with aseptic technique, we will be inoculating our plates with our uh, serial dilution of bacterial cultures. Okay, so I will be transferring 50 microliters using sterile pipette tubes, 50 microliters onto each plate. So, aspirate 50 microliters and, and so that you can see, I'm going to not use aseptic technique for a second there, just so that you can see, just drop it onto the agar, okay, get rid of the pipette tip. Okay, now what we do here is we have to spread the culture evenly um, over the plate so that um, the bacteria are spread out evenly and can develop into colonies that are visible, separated from other cells, not clumped together in the middle. So, um, again, I will not use the best aseptic technique in the world, but just so that you can see what is going on. Okay, so this is a spreader. They come in um, glass versions or plastic versions. Um, again, you don't you flame sterilize any plastic where it should come uh, sealed in its own um, a plastic uh, wrapping and only to be opened when you're about to use it. But what you do here is you spread your culture. So, so that you can see what's going on, you apply very little pressure, but you spread your culture out. quarter turn, repeat the process. Remember, you can't really see very easily where you are spreading it. Quarter turn, repeat the process to spread that bacterial culture out as well as you can. Last time, quarter turn. Okay, and that's done. All right, now, I did it like that to show you, but the way you would have been doing it is just partially opening and spreading out, close, quarter turn, partially open, spread it out, and so on. Okay, now we've done that, well, now we will discard this spreader, we don't use it again. Okay, because if we do use the same spreader for a different plate, we will be messing around with the concentrations of the dilutions that we have prepared. Okay, so off that spreader goes, and we will use a new one next time. So that plate is ready, I'll let the bacteria sit there, get settled down into the agar a little while, and then we'll put that into the incubator and we'll repeat that for the other plates.
So at this point, I have spread the bacteria out, uh, spread each serial dilution onto a different bacterial plate. I know exactly how much of the dilution I have put onto the plate, and I know, I know the dilution of each of these cultures. At this point, um, I would I'll give each of the plates a few minutes for the bacteria to settle down into the agar, but once that's done, I would take them, turn them upside down, and put them into an incubator around 20 degrees C, um, and give them uh, 24 hours, check the plates for colonies. Um, if the colonies are not visible by 24 hours, give them another 24 hours, but they should be visible by that time. Now, let's have a look at some that I won't say I made earlier, but my students did. Okay. So here is a really good example of what we would see. Um, we have the, the most concentrated um, plate there, or the, or the plate with the most concentrated dilution. I hope you can see that. Okay, now that it has got lots of colonies on it, and they are extremely uh, dense, so close, in fact, that are those cells to each other, that the colonies have merged together. Now, this plate is not usable to make an estimation of the uh, bacterial density because um, it was not dilute enough and the cells were growing too close to each other. Um, here's the next dilution, so that would have been the 1 in 10 dilution. This is a 1 in 100 dilution. And you can see here that while there are fewer colonies, some of these colonies are still very close together and we, we cannot say that each of those colonies formed from only one cell. So we can't use this plate either because it is, again, too dense. Now this plate here is more along the lines of what we would like. Uh, we have distinct colonies. We can count these colonies and we assume, we can assume that each of these colonies formed from a single bacterial cell on, the, on day one and has now resulted in a colony. So we can count the number of colonies on this plate, multiply that up by the dilution factor, okay, um, which was 1 in 10, 1 in 100, 1 in 1,000. So we would count the number of colonies here, multiply it by the dilution factor, also taking into account that we only plated or we only inoculated with 50 microliters, so 0 0.05 of a centimeter cubed. So we'd have to multiply that again by 20, then by the dilution factor, and then we would know what the density of the bacteria was in the culture that was used to inoculate these plates. And there we have it, okay? Now at this point what we would do is all the glassware would um, go to be autoclaved, sterilized, um, we will disinfect this area down, um, and then we will wash our hands with antibacterial soap and we'll go home, have a cup of tea.